In probability theory, there exist several different notions of convergence of random variables. The convergence of sequences of random variables to some limit random variable is an important concept in probability theory, and its applications to statistics and stochastic processes. The same concepts are known in more general mathematics as stochastic convergence and they formalize the idea that a sequence of essentially random or unpredictable events can sometimes be expected to settle down into a behavior that is essentially unchanging when items far enough into the sequence are studied. The different possible notions of convergence relate to how such a behavior can be characterized. Two readily understood behaviors are that the sequence eventually takes a constant value, and that values in the sequence continue to change but can be described by an unchanging probability distribution. Background Stochastic convergence formalizes the idea that a sequence of essentially random or unpredictable events can sometimes be expected to settle into a pattern. The pattern may for instance be convergence in the classical sense to a fixed value, perhaps itself coming from a random event, an increasing similarity of outcomes to what a purely deterministic function would produce an increasing preference towards a certain outcome, an increasing aversion against straying far away from a certain outcome, some less obvious. More theoretical patterns could be that the probability distribution describing the next outcome may grow increasingly similar to a certain distribution, that the series formed by calculating the expected value of the outcome's distance from a particular value may converge to zero that the variance of the random variable describing the next event grows smaller and smaller. These other types of patterns that may arise are reflected in the different types of stochastic convergence that have been studied. While the above discussion has related to the convergence of a single series to a limiting value, the notion of the convergence of two series towards each other is also important. But this is easily handled by studying the sequence defined as either the difference or the ratio of the two series. For example, if the average of n independent random variables y, i equals 1, n, all having the same finite mean and variance, is given by then as n tends to infinity, xn converges in probability to the common mean, mu, of the random variables y. This result is known as the weak law of large numbers. Other forms of convergence are important in other useful theorems, including the central limit theorem. Throughout the following, we assume that is a sequence of random variables, and x is a random variable, and all of them are defined on the same probability space. Convergence in distribution. With this mode of convergence, we increasingly expect to see the next outcome in a sequence of random experiments becoming better and better modeled by a given probability. Distribution Convergence in distribution is the weakest form of convergence, since it is implied by all other types of convergence mentioned in this article. However convergence in distribution is very frequently used in practice, most often it arises from application of the central limit theorem. Definition A sequence x1, x2, if random variables is said to converge in distribution, or converge weakly or converge in law to a random variable x if for every number x r at which f is continuous. Here f n and f are the cumulative distribution functions of random variables x n and x, respectively. The requirement that only the continuity points of f should be considered is essential. For example if x n are distributed uniformly on intervals, then this sequence converges in distribution to a degenerate random variable x equals 0. Indeed, f n equals 0 for all n when x 0, and f n equals 1 for all x 1, n when n greater than 0. However, for this limiting random variable f equals 1, even though f n equals 0 for all n. Thus the convergence of CDFS fails at the point x equals 0 where f is discontinuous. Convergence in distribution may be denoted as where is the law of x. For example if x is standard normal we can write. For random vectors x1, x2, rk the convergence in distribution is defined similarly. 
We say that this sequence converges in distribution to a random k vector x if for every a r k which is a continuity set of x. The definition of convergence in distribution may be extended from random vectors to more general random elements in arbitrary metric spaces, and even to the random variables which are not measurable, a situation which occurs for example in the study of empirical processes. This is the weak convergence of laws without laws being defined, except asymptotically. In this case the term weak convergence is preferable, and we say that a sequence of random elements xn converges weakly to x if for all continuous bounded functions h. Here E asterisk denotes the outer expectation, that is the expectation of a smallest measurable function g that dominates h. Properties since f equals pr. The convergence in distribution means that the probability for Exn to be in a given range is approximately equal to the probability that the value of x is in that range, provided n is sufficiently large. In general, convergence in distribution does not imply that the sequence of corresponding probability density functions will also converge. As an example, one may consider random variables with densities fn equals 1. These random variables converge in distribution to a uniform U, whereas their densities do not converge at all. However, Sheffet's lemma implies that convergence of the probability density functions implies convergence in distribution. The portmanteau lemma provides several equivalent definitions of convergence in distribution. Although these definitions are less intuitive, they are used to prove a number of statistical theorems. The lemma states that xn converges in distribution to x if and only if any of the following statements are true. ff for all bounded continuous functions f, ff for all bounded Lipschitz functions f, limps up f, f for every upper semi-continuous function f bounded from above, limf f, f for every lower semi-continuous function f bounded from below, limps up pr, pr for all closed sets c, limf pr, pr for all open sets u, lim pr equals pr for all continuity sets a of random variable x. The continuous mapping theorem states that for a continuous function g, if the sequence xn converges in distribution to x, then g converges in distribution to g. Note however that convergence in distribution of xn to xn, yn to y does in general not imply convergence in distribution of xn plus yn to x plus y, or of xn yn to xy. Levy's continuity theorem. The sequence xn converges in distribution to x if and only if the sequence of corresponding characteristic functions phi n converges pointwise to the characteristic Characteristic function phi of x. Convergence in distribution is metrizable by the Eliacute Vy Procor of metric. A natural link to convergence in distribution is the Skorokid's representation theorem. Convergence in probability. The basic idea behind this type of convergence is that the probability of an unusual outcome becomes smaller and smaller as the sequence progresses. The concept of convergence in probability is used very often in statistics. For example, an estimator is called consistent if it converges in probability to the quantity being estimated. Convergence in probability is also the type of convergence established by the weak law of large numbers. Definition A sequence xn of random variables converges in probability towards the random variable x if for all epsilon greater than 0 formally. Pick any epsilon greater than 0 and any delta greater than 0. Let Pn be the probability that xn is outside the bowl of radius epsilon centered at x. Then for xn to converge in probability to x there should exist a number n such that for all n n, pn less than delta. Convergence in probability is denoted by adding the letter p over an arrow indicating convergence, or using the plim probability limit operator. For random elements, xn, on a separable metric space. 
convergence in probability is defined similarly by properties convergence in probability implies convergence in distribution proof in the opposite direction convergence in distribution implies convergence in probability when the limiting random variable x is a constant proof convergence in probability does not imply almost sure convergence proof the continuous mapping theorem states that for every continuous function g, if, then also, convergence in probability defines a topology on the space of random variables over a fixed probability space. This topology is metrizable by the Kentucky fan metric, or almost sure convergence. This is the type of stochastic convergence that is most similar to pointwise convergence known from elementary real analysis definition to say that the sequence xn converges almost surely or almost everywhere or with probability 1 or strongly towards x means that this means that the values of xn approach the value of x in the sense that events for which xn does not converge to x have probability 0 using the probability space and the concept of the random variable as a function from omega to r this is equivalent to the statement using the notion of the limit inferior of a sequence of sets almost sure convergence can also be defined as follows almost sure convergence is often denoted by adding the letters a s over an arrow indicating convergence. For generic random elements Xn on a metric space, convergence almost surely is defined similarly. Properties almost sure convergence implies convergence in probability, and hence implies convergence in distribution. It is the notion of convergence used in the strong law of large numbers. The concept of almost sure convergence does not come from a topology on the space of random variables. This means there is no topology on the space of random variables such that the almost surely convergent sequences are exactly the converging sequences with respect to that topology. In particular, there is no metric of almost sure convergence. Sure convergence to say that the sequence of random variables defined over the same probability space converges surely or everywhere or pointwise towards x means, where omega is the sample space of the underlying probability space over which the random variables are defined. This is the notion of pointwise convergence of sequence functions extended to sequence of random variables. Sure convergence of a random variable implies all the other kinds of convergence stated above, but there is no payoff in probability theory by using sure convergence compared to using almost sure convergence. The difference between the two only exists on sets with probability zero. This is why the concept of sure convergence of random variables is very rarely used. Convergence in mean Given a real number R1, we say that the sequence Xn converges in the RTH mean towards the random variable X. If the RTH absolute moment C and D of Xn and X exist, and where the operator E denotes the expected value, convergence in RTH mean tells us that the expectation of the RTH power of the difference between Xn and X converges to zero. This type of convergence is often denoted by adding the letter LR over an arrow indicating convergence. The most important cases of convergence in RTH mean are when Xn converges in RTH mean to X for R equals 1. We say that Xn converges in mean to X. When Xn converges in RTH mean to X for R equals 2. We say that Xn converges in mean square to X. Convergence in the RTH mean for R1 implies convergence in probability. Furthermore, if R greater than S1, convergence in RTH mean implies convergence in STH mean. Hence, convergence in mean square implies convergence in mean. It is also worth noticing that if-then properties, provided the probability space is complete, 
if and then almost surely, if and then almost surely, if and then almost surely, if and then in, if and then in, if and then. None of the above statements are true for convergence in distribution. The chain of implications between the various notions of convergence are noted in their respective sections. There, using the arrow notation, these properties, together with a number of other special cases, are summarized in the following list. Almost sure convergence implies convergence in probability proof. Convergence in probability implies there exists a subsequence which almost surely converges. Convergence in probability implies convergence in distribution proof. Convergence in RTH order mean implies convergence in probability. Convergence in RTH order mean implies convergence in lower order mean, assuming that both orders are greater than or equal to 1, provided Rs1. If Xn converges in distribution to a constant C, then Xn converges in probability to C, proof, provided C is a constant. If Xn converges in distribution to X and the difference between Xn and Yn converges in probability to zero, then Yn also converges in distribution to X. Proof. If Xn converges in distribution to X and Yn converges in distribution to a constant C, then the joint vector converges in distribution to Proof. Provided C is a constant. Note that the condition that yn converges to a constant is important. If it were to converge to a random variable y then we wouldn't be able to conclude that converges to. If xn converges in probability to x and yn converges in probability to y then the joint vector converges in probability to. Proof. If xn converges in probability to x and if p equals 1 for all n and some b then xn converges in rth mean to x for all r1. In other words, if xn converges in probability to x and all random variables xn are almost surely bounded above and below, then xn converges to x also in any rth mean, almost sure representation. Usually, convergence in distribution does not imply convergence almost surely. However, for a given sequence xn, which converges in distribution to x0, it is always possible to find a new probability space and random variables, yn, n equals 0, 1, defined on it such that yn is equal in distribution to xn for each n0, and yn converges to y0 almost surely. If for all epsilon greater than zero, then we say that xn converges almost completely, or almost in probability towards x. When xn converges almost completely towards x then it also converges almost surely to x. In other words, if xn converges in probability to x sufficiently quickly, then xn also converges almost surely to x. This is a direct implication from the borel cantor lemma. If Sn is a sum of n real independent random variables, then Sn converges almost surely if and only if Sn converges in probability. The dominated convergence theorem gives sufficient conditions for almost sure convergence to imply L1 convergence. A necessary and sufficient condition for L1 convergence is and the sequence is uniformly integrable.